بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد طاہر اینڈ یو آر واچنگ مائی یوٹیوب چینل انجینئرنگ اسٹوڈیو فرام دس ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ اے نیو چیپٹر ڈیولپمنٹ آف ری انفورسمنٹ دا کنٹینٹس ٹو بی کورڈ ان دس چیپٹر آر بان اسٹرینتھ اینڈ بان ٹرانسفر میکانیزم ان کنکریٹ ڈیولپمنٹ لینتھ ڈیولپمنٹ لینتھ فار ڈیفارم بارس ان ٹینشن ڈیولپمنٹ لینتھ آف اسٹینڈرڈ ہو ان ٹینشن ڈیولپمنٹ لینتھ فار ڈیفارم بارس ان کمپریشن بار کٹ آف اینڈ ڈیولپمنٹ آف بار ان فلیگزل ممبر فار دس چیپٹر وی ول فالو ٹو ریفرنس بکس ون فرام جیمس کے وائٹ ری انفورس کنکریٹ میکینکس اینڈ ڈیزائن سیونتھ ایڈیشن اینڈ اے بک آف پلین اینڈ ری انفورس کنکریٹ بائی زیڈ ایس ایدی کی ان دس ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس واٹ از بانڈ اسٹرینتھ واٹ از پول آؤٹ ٹیسٹ فار بانڈ اسٹرینتھ بانڈ ٹرانسفر میکانیزم ان کنکریٹ اینڈ بانڈ فیلیئر فسٹ آف آل بانڈ اسٹرینتھ بانڈ اسٹرینتھ از ڈیفائنڈ ایز دا ریزسٹو اسٹریس اگینسٹ دا پول آؤٹ آف اسٹیل بار فرام دا کنکریٹ میس ڈیولڈ پر یونٹ سرفیس ایریا آف بار ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دا کنسیپٹ آف بانڈ اسٹریس فسٹ وی نیڈ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دا میکانیزم آف فلیگزل ریزسٹینس ان کیس آف بیم لیٹس کنسیڈر آ سمپلی اسپورٹیڈ بیم سبجیکٹیڈ ٹو اے پوائنٹ لوڈ تو انڈر دا ایپلیکیشن آف دس لوڈ A beam, the beam will bend in the downward direction and at the top there will be compression and in the bottom there will be tension. So if we take a section at any location, the stress profile or the strain profile of that beam will look like this, at this section. So if, we, if this is the strain profile, so from strain profile we can calculate the stress profile as well. We can see on the top there is compression and at the bottom there is tension. As we know the concrete is strong in compression but weak in tension, so the compressive stresses will be resisted by the concrete in the compression zone and the tensile stresses will be resisted by this steel reinforcement in the tension zone. If we draw the stress profile from the strain profile, it will look like this. This will be the compression stress in the concrete but we will ignore the tensile stress in the concrete in the tension zone instead there will be only tensile stress in the reinforcing bar which will be equal to es times e so this stress f here will be equal to es time e and here the stress will be 0.85 fc prime Okay, from this stress profile, we can calculate the force in the compression zone as well as the force in this reinforcing bar. Here we can see this force in the reinforcing bar is away from this concrete section, so it means it is tension. And this force can be calculated easily, which is equal to AS times Fy, mean area of this bar times the stress in this bar. We can plot this over here, at the top a compression force and at the bottom a tension force or tensile force in the reinforcing bar. If a tensile force is acting on the bar and bar is embedded in the concrete, so under the application of so, so under the application of this tensile force it should be pulled out from the concrete block. But we observe that it is not the case. Most of the time it is not pulled out from the concrete block or from the beam. The reinforcement stay at its place. The question is why? Why it is not being pulled? It means, if it is not being pulled, it means there is some resistance provided by this concrete to this reinforcing bar which resists its movement out of this concrete block. So that resistance is actually the bond stress. The resistance provided by the concrete against the pull out of this bar from the concrete block is actually bond stress. Now we can again see the definition. It is defined as a resistive stress. So it is a resistive stress against the pull out of steel bar from the concrete mass. And it is the stress, a resistive stress per unit surface area of bar. So the resistance per unit surface area of the bar. So it is termed as 
burn stress. The next is pull out test for burn strength. How we can calculate the burn strength? So there are different methods, different tests available in the literature that can be used to determine the burn strength of to determine the burn strength of a deformed bar embedded in the concrete. So in pull out test, we take a concrete cube or cylinder and we embed the reinforcement inside it up to a required length. Then we take that specimen into the machine in such a way that this is resting against a plate which has hole at its center. So mean it there is a plate which has hole at its center so that a bar can this bar can pass through this. And the cylinder is resting over here like this. So this plate act as a action frame and then we pull this bar by applying a force with the help of machine. The force at which this bar is pulled out that is termed as T. It is the maximum load at which this bar is being pulled out of this concrete block. So if we see the stress inside this steel bar along the length, along the embedment length, so at the face of this block the stress will be maximum equal to Fs and after some time this value will decrease and at the end of this bar it will become zero. Similarly if we see the burn stress or the reactional force or frictional force around this bar so it has profile like this and then at the later stage it also becomes zero. This failure load P at which this bar is pulled out of this concrete block it is actually equal to burn stress or burn strength or burn stress the resistance times the surface area of the bar. So stress multiplied by the area it becomes the load. So P is equal to mu average is burn stress. So actually this is we can see this is not the uniform value. So instead of it, that we will consider a average value like this. So average burn strength multiplied by the surface area of this bar. So surface area of bar is pi d into L. Pi d perimeter times the length. So it will give us the surface area of bar. So from here after rearranging this equation we will get the average bond strength is equal to the failure load divided by the surface area of that bar. In this way we can calculate the bond strength of a deformed steel bar embedded in the concrete by using pull out test. This bond strength is used for the calculation of development length that we will see at the later stage. The next is mechanism of bond transfer, how the force is transferred from bar to concrete or we can say where this resistance comes from. Okay, for plain or smooth bar embedded in concrete devel develops bond by or the develops resistance by adhesion between the concrete and the bar. So if this is a bar. So there might be some chemical adhesion between this bar and the surrounding concrete. So the first component is because of chemical adhesion and the second is small second is small friction, small amount of friction due to surface roughness. So because of this friction and the chemical adhesion, the bond is developed between concrete and the plane bar. So when we apply a load on this plane bar embedded in the concrete, what will happen? The bond will quickly last. Why? Because we know that when we pull our reinforcing bar or we apply a load, tensile load on a bar, so its diameter will reduce. So its, its diameter will reduce because of Poisson's effect. So when the diameter is reduced, there will become a gap between the concrete and bar so chemical adhesion as well as the friction will disappear. That's why smooth bars are not generally used for reinforcing a concrete. So in case where smoother bar must be embedded in concrete, anchor bolts, for example anchor bolts are stirrups made of smaller diameter bars. In that case mechanical anchorage in the form of hooks, nuts, arm and washers on the embedded end are used. So in that case if it is necessary to use smooth bar 
वी विल प्रोवाइड हुक्स एट द एंड और बोल्ट्स एट द एंड इन केस ऑफ स्टिरप वी यूज दिस कन्फिग्रेशन एट द एंड वी प्रोवाइड दिस हुक्स वन थर्टी फाइव डिग्री हुक्स द नेक्स्ट इज डिफाउम बार्स तो द डिफाउम बार्स इम्बेडेड इन कंक्रीट डिवेल्स द बॉन्ड बाय थ्री डिफरेंट कंपोनेंट्स केमिकल एडेजन जस्ट लाइक इन केस ऑफ प्लेन बार्स फ्रिक्शन बिकॉज ऑफ सर्फेस रफनेस एंड द थर्ड द मेन कंपोनेंट बेरिंग ऑन द डिफॉर्मेशन ऑफ द बार तो अगेन द एडेजन एज वेल एज दिस फ्रिक्शन विल डिस अपेयर वेन वी विल अप्लाई द टेंसाइल फोर्स ऑन दैट बार बट दिस थर्ड कंपोनेंट विल रिमेन देयर and the whole bond will be transferred by the bearing on these deformations so when the bearings act on the deformation of the bar just like this so the equal but opposite force from this bar will act on the concrete so because of this these bearing stresses or bearing forces the bond is transferred from bar to the concrete next is bond failure how this bond fails in case of deformed bars in case of plain bar we have seen that when we apply the load the bond will fail just after the application of load after some time or after some load the bond will fail the chemical adhesion as well as the surface friction both will disappear and the bond will fail the bar will be pulled out of the concrete but in case of deformed bars the first two component disappear just like the plane bars but the third component it does not disappear so the bearing force on the concrete have both longitudinal and radial component we have seen that a force from the concrete bearing force act on the bar and equal and opposite force from this bar act on the concrete action and reaction are equal and opposite this law applies over here so that component or that bearing force that act from this steel bar to the concrete it has two components one is longitudinal component and other is the radial component so if we see here will be the bearing force so it will have two components this one this is radial component and the second one this this is longitudinal so these two component exist at the same time and both of the components cause different type of failure in in the concrete the four failure mechanism can happen in case of deformed steel bar the first is under the application of load the steel bar may break the failure of steel bar and this happens when the length of this embedment is too high that the stress developed in the steel bar is more than the bond strength in that case steel bar will fail and the second is this longitudinal component of this bearing stress it can shear these blocks of concrete and the bar will come out of this concrete block so that will be a pull out failure the third is cone failure so this pull out failure as well as this cone failure these results from this longitudinal component of the bearing force or bearing stress so in case of cone failure what happens ribs of bar example this is concrete and this is the rib, ribs of bar so a force will from here will act on the concrete and it will cause a crack like this it will cause a crack when this is pulled in this direction so it will try to move this concrete in this direction and as a result a crack will appear over here on this side as well as on this side 
So as a result, a wedge of the concrete will be taken out of this concrete block. So that is termed as cone failure. So we can see here the con complete wedge is taken out or here a partial wedge is taken out. The best example of a wedge failure is if we embed a steel bolt inside a concrete we have a bolt at the end. So when we will apply a force in this direction so a bearing force will act on the concrete in this direction. So bearing force will act and it will cause a crack in this direction and this much wedge of the concrete will be pulled out. So this is termed as cone failure. So the last is the fourth is splitting failure and this splitting failure is caused by the radial component of the bearing stress. So this radial component of the bearing stress will cause the internal pressure and because of that internal pressure the tensile stresses will develop in the surrounding concrete. If that tensile stress is more than the tensile strength of concrete in that case a crack along the length or along the bar along the length of the bar will appear in the concrete. So this crack is termed as splitting crack. The load at which the splitting failure occur is a function of three properties or three parameters. The one is the distance between the bar up to the surface of concrete. So larger the distance, larger will be the load. Similarly, the distance between the bars. Larger the distance between the bar, larger will be the load. The second is tensile strength. Higher the tensile strength of concrete, higher will be the load. And the third factor is average bond strength. So the lesser the average bond stress, higher will be the splitting load. Higher bond strength means higher bearing force, higher the bearing force, higher will be the internal pressure. So the, if the internal pressure is high, definitely the splitting will occur easily. Other than the splitting load, this first criteria, the minimum distance from the bar to the surface and the minimum distance between the bars, it also affects the location of splitting crack. If the side cover as well as the distance between the two bars is less than this bottom cover, so in the, that case a horizontal crack will appear like this at the level of reinforcement. And if these two covers, bottom as well as side cover, both are same, but the distance between the bars is high. In that case, these cracks will appear like this. And if the side cover is high and the distance between the bar is also high, but this bottom cover is less, so in that case, this bottom cover will split. Thank you very much. This is all for this video. In the next lecture, we will discuss the development length.